So what we have here is a bicycle wheel for a child's bike. Now um, I have one here that I'm rebuilding for a child. Um, one of my good friends, his child needs a new wheel for his back for the back of his bike. So I thought I'd show you just how to rebuild the uh, bearings and uh, get this stuff uh, in good working order for children to go out and have some fun because it's what it's all about. So, this is what we'll be rebuilding, or this is the rebuilt one, but now I'm going to show you just how I did it. So, to do this, all we need to do is uh, have a couple of tools that aren't common. Uh, the cone wrench and the free wheel remover and sometimes you don't even need that one now a cone wrench is just a thin wrench here's one that you would look like you'd buy in the store not one that I've made it's thinner to fit on the cone so we first start by taking off the free wheel if we have to and this one we do And always push against the movable part on a, an adjustable wrench. And let's just take that off now. Simple as that. Now this piece is garbage. It's been busted up too much. They are needed, but in this case it won't do anything. I'll have to replace that one later. So make sure your stuff is extra clean, make sure you got lots of rags. Just because you don't want to get any extra grime and stuff stuck inside. And use your cone wrench on the cone. You'll see it's a little slot in there. And just take off the nut on the outside which will be a 17 mil, more than likely. Now this uh, axle has uh, got a few dings in it, so the threads aren't uh, exactly perfect, so we'll just work it back and forth. It's quite common for children's bikes. They get kind of beat up. A little bit of work and off it comes. Sometimes you have to just kind of work them back and forth a little bit. And there's spacer. Make sure you keep that. And now the cone can come off. Now we can just use a regular wrench. They're usually too thick to fit on them, but now that there's nothing on the end of it, it can work for you. Now I'm just going to take that off and the bearings are already falling out so we'll make sure we don't lose any of those oh, there's the thing in the axle again I'll pull the axle right out and there'll be bearings on the other side as well. And if one falls in, you can always just take a magnetic screwdriver and then pull it out. And there you have it. I'll take a look at it, make sure there's no cracks or things like chips or anything like that that's inside that uh, has been. <clears throat> destroying the uh, bearings or anything like that and make sure that the hub is in good shape we'll clean up all the extra oil all the grease and stuff that was inside we need to get rid of all of it make it nice and shiny again
Yeah. The cleaner you get it, the better. Now let's move on. Let's pick up those bearings and count them. Because we have to make sure we know how many bearings go on each side. In this case, there was 18. That's 9 per side. We'll clean that. I like to uh, use a container and a little bit of WD-40. WD-40 is uh, all I use that for is cleaning and I make sure I wipe all of it off afterwards. You don't really want that inside your hubs when your hubs are all together. But it sure works good as a cleaning. go and that's all it takes now you gotta take them out of there you gotta clean all that off but you can't just pour it out so you gotta use your finger and pull them out trying to leave some of the WD-40 behind don't want to make a big mess so let's cap that put that away there we go I'll just give them a good rub and there you go nice and clean I can inspect them too to make sure they don't look anything similar to bubblegum. That would be bad and you'd have to replace them. These ones are good. Now let's throw down a cloth to keep everything nice and clean. Now let's put those bearings aside now on a clean surface so we can use our rag still and make sure everything is nice and clean. Make sure nothing got in there. Of course here, shinier the better. Now I use a white lithium grease. I just like it because of how it sticks and I can see where it all sticks. And of course, it's fairly inexpensive. And I'll just smear it in there like it's filling the hole like filler. Now there is such thing as too much. But too much is a lot better than not enough. Too much you can just wipe off later. Now as we put the bearings in, we've got to make sure we count them to make sure we've got the right amount. And count one more time just to make sure. And yes, they're good. Now let's cover those bearings more. Make sure we can't see them so that the grease can hold them in so we can do the other side. See? Don't fall out. Now we'll do the other side. And yep, they're already mounted. Good. Let's cover them up. Now they're solid in there. Now we're going to have to clean up the axle. Now remember, the spacer that we took off has to go on, as well as the cone, but it has to go on the right side. So after we get this cleaned up, I'll show you just how I do it. A little bit extra cleaner. This one was really gooey. A lot of old bad grease. Sometimes it comes off like wax. Now that goes where the free hub was. So put that in there. And out it comes. And you can see all that extra grease there. It's okay. Again, too much grease is a whole lot better than not enough. Now let's clean up that little cone that we pulled off. That goes against the bearings. Again, this one looked like wax chunks coming off. It was really gooey. It was not pretty at all. But sure cleaned up nice. 
All right, so time to put that on. I'm going to hold the axle on the bottom side while I put it on the top side. There we go. And of course, this one was the bad axle. Well, it was really that bad. Just had a couple of dings in it, so it makes it a little more difficult to put things on. A little bit of working at it, it'll go on just fine. Now I tighten as hard as I can with my fingers. It's called finger tighten. Wipe all that extra grease off. Yep, it's good. Now we put the spacer on, and now the lock nut. So we finger tighten that lock nut. Make sure it's on there good. And now we have to lock them together, lock nut and the cone. So we just take a wrench and the cone wrench and snug them up together and then give them one little extra quick pull. Yep, that's it. That's all it takes. Now it moves up and down. It's a little loose. So we're going to tighten them up. So we're going to use the two lock nuts on either side of the wheel and tighten them up together just a little bit. That's it. That's all it takes. And yep, that's good that way and spins freely. Nice. That's pretty well done. Now let's take a look at that free hub. And that free wheel is just a little dirty, so I'll clean that up. And of course, I've noticed a little bit of rust in there too on the threads on the inside. So I'm going to take some grease, rub it in there good, and use the grease just to clean up the rust. Yeah, it's starting to look good. Well, let's put a little extra grease on there. It'll also help it from rusting later. And we'll wipe off all the excess. Make sure it's nice and clean in there. And spin it on. We're good.